It's freaking freezing in here. Hello! Another sewing slash cosplay video. I can't be stopped. It is very addicting when you are starting to learn a new skill and you just want to keep doing it and sew every costume in the entire universe. So that's what this is. <laughs> now I've done a couple makeup looks based on Dorothy, but I've never actually got around to doing the full costume, mainly because I didn't trust my sewing skills. And while I'm still not an expert, I'm still very much a novice, I am starting to grasp a little bit better how to read patterns and how to actually put together garments. I thought right now would be the perfect opportunity for me to try to finally check that off of my cosplay list. You know, this is just gonna be a wholesome, feel-good cosplay. <laughs> I wanna bring you along on this journey, this wholesome journey. So I do have a pattern from Simplicity. I have some fabric that I actually got online because I wanted to make this fabric as close to screen accurate as I could and this was very, very, very close. Fairly hefty. I think it'll give a really nice structure and it won't feel like just a Halloween costume. I went to the fabric store and I got this white fabric. It was in the lining section, but I liked it anyways. Buttons and rickrack which is just the most fun name for any item of clothing ever. <laughs> Rick Rack. These ruby slippers, and I decided just to order these because there is no way in hell that I was gonna glue about 3.4 trillion sequins onto a pair of shoes. And then I got a basket. And for all of you planning an intervention between me and my hot glue gun, no worries. There is no foreseeable use of my hot glue gun in this particular project. But fear not, you will see her again. So first things first, I'm going to open up the pattern and start reading and hopefully I can decipher the foreign language that is sewing patterns. I've never used a simplicity pattern before, but if her name is of any hint, then even someone like me can follow it. And if not, I'm gonna sue them. I'm still always a little overwhelmed and scared when starting a new sewing project because I'm still not fully confident in my skills, but you know what? This is a dream of mine. Make your dreams come true! <sighs> also, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is awesome, and I will talk more about that during the wrap-up. But for now, let's get started. Okay. I have no idea what this means. This is not simplicity. I am confusion. What does stay stitching mean? Stitching placed along a bias or curved seam to prevent the fabric of a garment from stretching while the garment is being made. Hmm. Now granted, this is only my second time sewing from a pattern. It seems like the pattern that I used from the 1940s was easier to understand than this one is. But then again, I was pretty overwhelmed in that project before I actually started laying everything out and cutting out all the pattern pieces I needed. So maybe that's that's gotta be my first step because this is not great. Hey, floppy boy. How dare you give a Jim Halpert look to the camera? All right, so I've cut out all the pattern pieces that I needed, which took a millennia. And I've separated what I need for each fabric, AKA the bodice and the sleeves and all that stuff, and then the dress itself. So now comes the fun part of pinning it all to the fabrics and cutting it all out. Day two. What I did at the end of yesterday was I pinned the pattern pieces to the fabric and cut out everything that I needed. So I do have the gingham fabric and then the actual shirt fabric. All the pieces are ready to go. Now it's just a matter of 
piecing them all together. But like I said, now that I have the fabric pieces all cut out, hopefully it's just a little easier to understand the directions because they're a doozy. <laughs> I'm probably gonna put on The Wizard of Oz on the TV, mainly because I just watched all the Ted Bundy stuff on Netflix and uh, your girl needs a palate cleanser. Little update, have the front of the dress. I think this is what I was supposed to do. And now I have to Attach it to uh, this one. I'll have to attach them here. Take this and kind of do this little thing right here. And then I work on the straps. This bodice is a lot more complicated than I thought it would be. Also, you should be proud of me because this is the first time I actually followed instructions on ironing seams and pressing them because usually I'm just too lazy to do that. So far, um, as you can see, I've attached all this, I've done the shoulder things, attached the front part to the two backs. Yeah, she's coming together very slowly. So next I'm going to do the sleeves, the big poofy sleeves. I have always wanted to know how to make these kind of sleeves, like the poof. This will be a good learning experience. Let me ask you something. Why you have to go and make things so complicated? Skirt. There were three giganto rectangles and I have stitched those all together. Really long skirt which will be gathered at the top which will give it like a really nice A-line shape and a lot of volume hopefully. Basically what I have to do now is make the skirt band which is kind of confusing. Basically that will go on the bottom of the skirt, so it's just that little breakup of pattern. We are moving along here. <laughs> so I'm gonna get that skirt band figured out. Maybe today I'll attach that to the skirt, and then I think I'll call it quits for today because I'm tired. A girl can only watch so much Parks and Rec. That's not true. So the skirt band is a little weird. Basically, it's this trapezoid, <laughs> right? I don't know. And then what I'm supposed to do is kind of sew it together like a tube and then cut along the spiral. Okay, day three. Hopefully I can finish everything today. I don't see that being a problem just because I only really have the skirt, the collar, and the zipper, and then I have to work on the wig. Yesterday, I finished up the skirt band, and then this morning, I pressed it, so I don't have to have any pins in it, which is kind of nice. Who would have thunk <laughs> pressing things actually helps? Wow. And then I have to gather the skirt and start attaching it to the bodice. And let's get started. So many other places for you to lie down, my sweet. Why? Okay, so for the gathering on the skirt, usually I do it by hand, 
um, mostly because that's the only way that I know how to do it. But I read and watched online how to gather by machine, so I'm gonna try that. Uh, what I've done so far is I've made two identical lines of stitching with the largest stitch size that my machine would do for me, that's 5.0 and I left one side open with a bunch of threads and then the other side I closed. Should be able just to pull the bobbin threads and then it should gather. Let's see if I did that right. <laughs> oh, it's working. I have a feeling this is probably good for smaller gathers. When you try your best, but you we'll do it by hand. <laughs> Dang it. Try it on. While I do like the actual construction of the dress, it does not fit even with a corset underneath. Whoops. Yes, it is absolutely my fault for not trying this on beforehand and before I actually sewed everything, but I guess I just was kind of trusting the pattern measurements. I don't know, that sucks really bad. I think I'm gonna have to go in and just like Frankenstein away to get this wider, to add some more fabric. Okay, so uh... It's not great. Whatever. I mean, it fits now, so... The front looks nice. That's all, pretty much all that I care about. Just don't look behind me, okay? So now I'm going to do the hem, and I think the dress is complete. For the wig, I rolled up the sides, secured it with an elastic so that it wouldn't go anywhere, and then I braided just a little bit before putting it into a pigtail. Then I took foam rollers and rolled up the bottom of the pigtails. And then I used a regular old clothes steamer, making sure to get all the nooks and crannies and going over everything a few times. I am up bright and early, as you can probably tell. The thing about Dorothy is she had some pretty thin eyebrows. Now a normal person should and could block out their brows. I hate blocking out my brows and I want this to look as natural as it can and I think even the best blocked brow still has that seam where you can tell that they're just glued down eyebrows. We're gonna give my eyebrows a trim. Is this a bad idea? <laughs> but you know what, they're just eyebrows and they're gonna grow back so I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> Ta-da! So now that we've got mid-2000s eyebrows, I'm going to put on my foundation like I normally do. All right, then I guess we'll just do the brows. I'm trying to find a photo where she's not like, so that seems to be the default Dorothy face on Google. I'm going to take this brow pencil and we're going to try to mark out where they end and where they begin. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in with some concealer and just shape those up. I'm gonna add a little bit of bronzer around the edges of my face just cause she was not as pale as me. So now the eyes, I think. So I'm gonna take a light brown shadow and just put it all over my eyes, including the underneath. And then also bring it along this bone right here. This Judy has a very prominent bridge of her nose right there. And then taking not so dark of a shade, I'm going to very subtly just contour my nose a bit, making the bridge of my nose a little wider than my actual bridge. 
and then going down into my normal nose. Just shading my nose so it looks a little smaller. Contour those eye holes. Okay, and then much like Daenerys, I'm gonna go in and pronounce that brow bone even more. So with a slightly darker brown, I'm patting it out first so it's not too crazy. I'm gonna go with my brown liquid eyeliner and just kind of work out the shape of her eyes. So I'm taking a heck ton of blush. Yes, that is a unit of measurement. <laughs> Basically with Dorothy, if you think you're wearing too much blush, put some more on. So with a lip liner, I'm going to match the shape of her lips the best I can, which luckily they're pretty similar to mine. Her top lip is a bit more thick than mine, so. I'm gonna add a little bit of a fake shadow underneath to make my lips look like they're bigger than they are. And then I'm gonna fill in the lips with a lipstick. And then going over it with a more vibrant pink. When Mr. Hoover said to cut my dinner down, I never even hesitate, I never frown. I cut my sugar. This pair of lashes and cut them so they're mainly just on the outside corners. Wig time! I have to get rid of my actual hair, which is kind of silly because the wig that I got is very, very similar to my hair. And to be honest, I probably could have just done it with my own hair, but I didn't, so. Well, before we fix everything, I'm gonna take these rollers out. One of the benefits of using a wig that actually looks like your own hair is that you can do this. You know, I don't have to tell. Dorothy's got some bad roots. <laughs> Cover up my roots a little with an orange eyeshadow. Don't feel like dyeing your hair? Just do this. It only took you a couple hours every morning. Okie dokie. So I'm back. I thought I'd do like a little wrap up and talk about the project and then talk about the sponsor. <laughs> so all in all, I am so happy with everything. Like I said before, this is a dream cosplay of mine. So it means so much to me to be able to just to check that off my list. That aspect of it is really, really special to me. And I think the front of the dress came out really, really good <laughs> and better than I thought it would. The back, we won't talk about the back. Which honestly is fine because, you know, this is only my second time using a pattern. It's not perfect by any means, um, but you know, I think every seamstress or anyone with an interest in sewing as a hobby, not everything they make is gonna be perfect, especially in the beginning when they're still learning. Things I would change for next time around, definitely try on the costume every step of the way, even if you think it's gonna be your size and even if the pattern says it's your size, so happy. This is the main reason I love cosplay is because you can take a character you love and just become them. I wanted to talk about the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare, uh, which means it's time for Segway over the rainbow. Eh? If you have not heard of Skillshare, Skillshare is basically a website where 
you can take courses in the certain topics that you're interested in. So basically it's like an online learning community and there's over 25,000 classes in design and business. Pretty much anything you can think of, they have a course on it. And I'm just really glad that they offered to sponsor this video because I figured this would be perfect and I figured you guys would get a lot of use out of Skillshare. There's just a lot of knowledge on there and for you guys to be able to utilize that is pretty dang sweet. And on that note, there's going to be a link in the description and the first 500 people to click on that will get two months of Skillshare free. And after that two months, it's only around $10 a month. I personally have utilized some of the sewing classes on there and it has seriously helped a lot when it comes to how to read patterns and how to sew from patterns and all that good stuff. So yeah, thank you Skillshare so much for sponsoring this video and I hope you guys find a wealth of knowledge on there. And that about wraps it up for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. I know it's a little bit different than my Butt Make It Vintage series and it's slightly less creative, but thank you for coming on this wholesome journey with me. I love you guys, whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every week and we have fun here. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Which is just... <laughs> There's nothing in here. <laughs> oh, Rachel, you're so funny. So yeah. <laughs> also, just a moment of appreciation for this wicked witch mood. Do it. Okay. Yes, you can. <laughs> okay. Just do it. Okay, Shia, I will. Let's get started. Crinkly TV just had to have the last word. I was like, yeah, let's do it. What? Let's do it. Uh, and I've separated. <laughs> See the way you're acting like you're somebody else, getting me frustrated. You're welcome. Pawnee is filled with a bunch of pee pee heads. Thank you very much for this amazing award. I'm sorry I said pee pee heads. <laughs> Classic. Excuse me, that's my feet. Whew, you're heavy. <laughs> sack of potatoes. Someone with a sewing hobbit. What? Sewing hobbit. Can I get one of those? You know, I watched Wizard of Oz yesterday, and number one, my eyes were watering the whole time because I'm a big baby. It's just so wholesome. And number two, Dorothy screams a lot. <laughs>